Good evening. I'd like to call this May 9th, 2023 school board regular meeting and budget public hearing number three to order. Ms. Goodell, could you please take the roll? Yes, Dr. Anderson. Here. Dr. Dimmick isn't here. Ms. Downs. Here. Dr. Gould. Here. Dr. Ortiz. Here. Ms. Silverman. Here. And Ms. Tice. Here. Thank you. Thank you. And I know that Dr. Dimmick will be um, rolling in here any minute, so we'll see her in a minute. If you could all join me to say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. If I could have a motion to adopt the agenda. Yes, Dr. Ortiz. Chair Downs, I move to adopt the agenda as presented. Thank you, Dr. Ortiz. May I have a second? Thank you, Ms. Silverman. All those in favor say yes. Yes. All those opposed say no. Thank you. Motion carries. And we're at 2.01, progress update on wellness, equity, and belonging. And I'll turn it over to Dr. Noonan. Thank you, Chair Downs, and good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for, for being here tonight. Um, I think as the school board is aware, and hopefully the community is as well, um, one of our um, major areas of emphasis in our new strategic plan is on wellness, equity, and belonging. Um, and tonight, uh, I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Paul Swanson for his work, along with John Brett and others, uh, including FCC TV, um, in helping us put together tonight's um, spotlight on wellness, equity, and belonging. When I think about what does success look like in terms of wellness, equity, and belonging, and social emotional learning, I think that that looks like and sounds like and feels like healthy, happy, you know, thriving kids and staff in our schools. So when we think about wellness, equity, and belonging and the work that we're really trying to focus on to support the school division and our community staff and students, we're really thinking about things like the project the equity Div division level team is working on to evaluate all school programs and see what kind of barriers might currently exist in those programs and how we can solution find to break those barriers years down. At Henderson, we primarily deliver our SEL lessons, social emotional learning lessons through PAC. So first of all, people think PAC's an acronym. It's not. It's just kind of, um, it, it signifies kind of like a, a pack of dogs because we're the Huskies. And we know in a pack, it's a very close knit group. They move together. They help each other out. So that was initially the purpose of PAC when PAC was first developed a few years ago. Now, with the post-pandemic student that we have today, we have recognized and realized that we need more uh, of that social and emotional learning training for those students. One of the new things that we're doing this year is having counseling as part of the Encore rotation. And what makes that really beneficial for students is that it ensures all students have access to tier one social emotional learning. So we are providing mindfulness and evidence-based um, curriculum that we're using here at Oak Street. And we're providing that for all of our fourth graders in every fourth grade classroom this year. We are looking at it um, for next year to provide it to the third, fourth, and fifth graders. Morning meeting is a wonderful way to start each day. The children are so excited about our responsive classroom morning meeting. There are purposeful components to morning meeting. There's a greeting where everybody greets each other by name. They feel heard, they feel seen. There's also a sharing component where children get to share important events about their life and know that they're part of a wonderful community in our classroom. Um, there is also a fun group activity where we get to build cohesion and have collaboration and children get to participate in a lively, um, a lively activity. It could be reciting a poem, dancing, and then it ends with a morning meeting um, message that I write to them every day. They know I'm ready, prepared for them, and give to give them a little glimpse into what our day is like. During our responsive classroom morning meeting, every child feels like they belong. Um, I think all teachers should do morning meeting because 
it makes, I feel like it makes the students really happy and makes the teacher really happy to see that they're happy and they learn a lot about their class and what they like and feel more comfortable being with them every day. So one of the things the preschool did this year was have the teachers come to our home and it was really magical for our daughter to see her teachers walk through the door and us inviting them into the house really showed to her that they were safe, people she could trust, be comfortable with, getting to show her toys and her dog and all the things that she loves with the people she loves in her comfortable and safe environment allowed them to connect on a level that was really special for her and for us. And, you know, especially after COVID, being home, not getting to see a lot of people, not getting to do a lot of new things, starting school was a really, was tricky for her this year. And she was, had a lot of anxieties about it, but being able to see her teachers on that level really just amplified how, what a wonderful school experience it was going to be for her. So when we think about home visits and the connection to um, wellness and belonging, I think about one of the most important things to me is that these kids feel safe and secure. They feel safe and secure at home, so when they feel safe and secure and they see that connection, they're safe and secure at home, they're safe and secure at school, then they belong in both places. Okay, so uh, I'm proud to say that this year at Meridian High School, the Black Student Union, BSU, we've done quite a bit. Uh, but I think the most important thing that we've done is worked with other groups within Meridian High School to create a healthier school community. Uh, this year we held a student panel that addressed the overall impact of police brutality on the entirety of the school community, as well as uh, worked with JAM, which stands for Judaism at Meridian, on uh, creating and you know developing their panel as well. Uh, we're working with uh, GSA, the Gay Straight Alliance, on some of their initiatives, and um, more importantly, we are just trying to contribute to the overall school. This spring, we implemented Signs of Suicide by bringing the program to our secondary school campus here, specifically at Meridian. We trained staff. We brought in mental health staff from the entire division to support students. Students were taught the acronym ACT, which is about Acknowledge, Care, and Tell. Students identified who their trusted adult was for the staff. And then at the end of the day, they took a screener, students that needed additional mental health support. We, would make, we made sure to check in with those students and provide that support. At Meridian, we've kind of done a lot of social and emotional learning. And I think one of the most important aspects of it for me has been a lot of the signs of suicide and the anti-Semitism uh, lessons that we've done. I also think it's just an amazing time for students as well as teachers to decompress and make connections with each other. Basically, I've been here my whole entire lifetime, and it really feels like a family because the teachers really do care about their students, which helps a lot because students then are able to make friendships with their peers, and they can also build relationships with their teachers. The SOL scores, they're important, but the most important thing is are we good human beings? Are we taking care of each other? Are we supporting each other? And if we didn't have wellness, equity, and belonging as a strategic planning component, there would be, I believe, even more significant impact from the mental health issues that our children and young adults in our schools are facing and our staff are facing. That was an incredible video. Thank you for Ms. to Mr. Brett and your team for making that video. Uh, Ms. Sharp, always our uh, used to be our empress of COVID. Luckily, we, we have that behind us, and now she's really helping us with social and emotional uh, learning and well-being. And uh, it's just it's fantastic. And I completely agree with what Ms. Sharp was saying. Is you know, SOL scores only are part of the picture, you know, and grades are only part of the picture. And I think, I know I speak for all my colleagues up here when, when we want to make sure that every student feels like they belong and that a lot of that is empathy. And I feel, uh, I feel that our students have that, but a big piece of our responsibility is to help introduce them to students from different backgrounds, making sure everyone feels valued and welcomed. And I think this was just a terrific video and I'm, I'm assuming we'll show it to the community via morning announcements, is that right? 
That's correct. It'll be in the morning announcements tomorrow as part of the uh, school board. Okay, yep. great. Uh, any any comments or questions from the video? Okay. Well, thank you. It was very very well done. Okay, we're going to move on to 3.01 BIE certificates and awards presentation, and I'll turn it back over to Dr. Noonan. Thank you so much. Um, a couple of people I want to um, call up to the podium. Uh, the first is Regan Davis. Uh, Regan is one of our. Com you got to come up to the podium now. <laughs> you can't just sit there, Regan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Regan is our uh, community outreach um, coordinator and it's doing an extraordinary job for us here in the City of Falls Church, along with Mary Beth Connolly, um, who is also here tonight, um, who also works on community outreach and also is part of the, a plays a significant role in the strategic planning process. And tonight um, we had a, a really nice opportunity before the meeting to meet um, a number of the, the community partnership um, uh, folks that were here and uh, I, you know I had a chance to meet most of them but I just on behalf of the school system would like to say thank you again for your incredible support of the schools um, we can't do the work that we do without you and uh, without our parents and without our students so so thanks so much so I know that there's a, a presentation tonight um, and uh, we welcome uh, Regan and Mary Beth okay thank you very much I will try to keep this short <laughs> Um, I also want to recognize our BIE, which is our Business and Education Partnership Chair, Allison Miller. And we have a, a committee member, uh, Stephanie Oppenheimer, who is also here tonight. Um, so we are here to recognize businesses who have contributed significantly to um, the school system. So they businesses, whether they're large, small, corporate, family-owned, um, play a key role in supporting our communities and our school system. Um, they contribute to our schools in many different ways, um, including helping with in-kind or financial donations, um, scholarship programs, supporting extracurricular activities, offering internship opportunities, volunteering themselves in the schools, um, and sponsoring field trips. Um, so this type of support is invaluable from the business and nonprofit community. Um, tonight, we are going to be recognizing eight local businesses for their vital co contributions. Um, so first up is the, we have three businesses that will be awarded um, to the Virginia School Boards Association Business Honor Roll. So the first business is 38 North Studio, and we will... Oh, you want to come up? Sarah Marks is here. Um, 38 North Studio is a creative sound and music production studio located, oh, located in the city of Falls Church. Um, that there are two co-owners, Buddy Spear and Sarah Marks, who is here with us tonight. Um, they've supported the Meridian High School Music Department by hosting students to record songs in a professional setting and teaching them how to use sound mixing equipment. Buddy Spear is also a graduate of George Mason High School. Thank you so much. Uh huh. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Moore Architects is a full-service architecture firm led by Charlie Moore, who is a, also a City of Falls Church resident, a George Mason High School alumni, and parent of three children who currently attend Falls Church City Public Schools. Actually, one of them already graduated. Two attend, one's in college. Um, Moore Architects has been an ardent supporter of the Falls Church Education Foundation, sponsoring the annual gala and auction and the Home and Garden Tour. Charlie and members of his team have also shared their experience and insight to students as part of the Meridian High School Career Fair. And the Biscuit Factory. Rob Lyall is here from the Biscuit Factory. It's very different from Preservation Biscuit, so we will explain how they're different. Um, the Biscuit Factory is an award-winning, full-service documentary production company based here in the city of Falls Church. Um, producer and director Molly Herman is a Falls Church City resident and parent of two children who attend Falls Church City Public Schools. And photographer, is that correct? Um, and co-owner Rob Lyle um, lives in McLean, but he is here with us today, and they've been based in Falls Church for 18 years. Um, the Biscuit Factory produced the documentary One Pill Can Kill, and screened it for free for all Meridian High School students and parents. 
They also created videos for the Falls Church Education Foundation Virtual Gala in 2020 and the Class of 2020 graduation video during the pandemic. Molly has spoken to the Meridian Entrepreneurs Club and has been interviewed by students for Women's History Month. She, has al she also started a community food pantry at Jesse Thackeray Preschool. So thank you to the Biscuit Factory. The next four awards will be given out by the Business and Education Partnership, and these are our honored partners for this year. Um, the first recipients, and they unfortunately were not able to be here tonight, um, but it's Balanced Female Fitness. It's a fitness business located in the city of Falls Church. Um, owner Janine Bonds is a resident of Falls Church and has two children who attend our schools. Co-owner Lauren Serber is a first grade teacher in nearby Fairfax County. Um, Balanced Female Fitness has supported FCCPS staff members by offering free classes and discounts on fitness memberships and by sponsoring Falls Church Education Foundation events, the Home and Garden Tour, the Annual Gala and Auction, and the Run for the Schools. And you may have, re you may recognize Janine and Lauren because they have woken up very early the past couple years to lead the Run for the Schools participants in uh, warm-ups before the event. So they are full of energy. Unfortunately, they're not here tonight, but we will... Give them, oh. oh, shoot, sorry. There you go, there they are, leading exercises. Um, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, okay, so our next business is Integrity Tire and Auto Repair. And Chris Fedora is here with us tonight. Integrity Tire and Auto Repair is a full service automotive repair shop located here in the city of Falls Church. Owner Chris Fedora has been a gracious supporter of Give Day. He has provided coupons and auction items for FCCPS events and financial sponsorship of the Falls Church Education Foundation Run for the Schools, the Little, Little City Scramble, and the a annual gala. Students from Meridian High School also learn from the best while job shadowing Chris and his staff. So if you have any need of repair for your car, this is the place to take it. <laughs> Okay, our next business is the Pimmet Hills Pollinator Company, and Henry Colley is here with us tonight. Um, the Pimmet Hills Pollinator Company is a small landscaping company based just outside the city of Falls Church, focusing on creating pollinator habitats. Owner Henry Colley has partnered with the Meridian High School Sustainability Program by donating plants and overseeing the installation of a pollinator garden on the grounds of the school. Um, they also sponsored the Falls Church Education Foundation Home and Garden Tour this past year. Thank you, Henry. Okay, um, next up is Ryan and Wetmore, which is a CPA accounting firm, and Mike Wetmore is here with us. Thank you. Um, Ryan and Wetmore is a small but mighty accounting firm with three locations in Virginia and Maryland. Co-founder Mike Wetmore is a resident of the City of Falls Church. He has two kids at Meridian, and he is a longtime supporter of the Meridian High School Career Series. Mike has shared his career path and experience with many students over the years and recently provided a series of videos promoting the benefits of being a CPA and joining the coolest profession on earth. <laughs> Okay, our final award tonight is for the Rookie of the Year, and that award goes to Harvey's Restaurant. And Tom, Thomas Harvey is here tonight with us. Did you bring anything to eat, Mr. Harvey? <laughs> uh, no, did you see the spread that we had out? I mean, it was not Harvey's-esque, but we, we tried. Um, Harvey's Restaurant opened its doors in the City of Falls Church in March of 2022. Owner Thomas Harvey has a welcoming personality and has already supported numerous organizations in the community to include Falls Church City Public Schools and the Falls Church Education Foundation. Harvey's and the Neighborhood Barbershop hosted a unique fundraising event this past July called the Battle of Broad Street with proceeds benefiting FCEF. Thomas also spoke about his career and experience in the food and be beverage industry to students from Meridian High School this past fall. So, thank you for being here. Okay, thank you to all of our awardees. We would like to take a picture up front with the school board.
you join us. Okay. I'll Your awesome come leadership. Lead them over. Thank you, ma'am. Thanks. And, uh, and uh, Allison and Stephanie, you all come. Allison and Stephanie, BIE representatives, come on up. Thank you all uh, so much. Thanks to uh, Ms. Davis and Ms. Connolly uh, for your leadership and also uh, our BIE committee for uh, making those connections between our businesses and our schools. And just thank you to all the businesses between externships, donations of money and products, enhancing curriculum, mentoring, and hosting fundraisers. We could not do it without our local businesses. So thank you all very much. We are now going to move on to 3.02 Scholastic Bowl team, and I'll turn it back over to Dr. Noonan. Thank you so much. Uh, tonight is a, a really exciting evening. We get to recognize a lot of folks. Uh, and at this time, we'd like to welcome Mr. Pepper up as our uh, Scholastic Bowl sponsor, uh, who will, whichever you like, sir, uh, who will introduce uh, his folks that are here. So. Tell us a little bit about what's going on. Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, so I'm John Pepper at Meridian High School, and I hopefully I can be heard. Um, I'm the coach of Meridian's Scholastic Bowl team, and we had an absolutely fantastic season. When I saw you all last year, most of you all last year, um, one of the things that I had said was, the one thing we really need to do is recruit um, for this year. And so we turned a team of seven into a team of close to 20 at times, and they couldn't all be here tonight. Uh, but we had a fantastic season. So I'm actually going to bring them up and have them tell you about the season because it was really their hard work um, that let us have as good a season um, as we did. And so with that, I'm going to bring um, as many of them up as I can. And so <laughs> uh, we'll start and we'll just bring them up and I can introduce them or they can introduce themselves as they come to you. All of you, come on up. Yep. It's, you don't need to be shy. <laughs> and we'll let um, Xander and Eileen, who are really our two captains and leaders, uh, Tell us about tell you about their season. They can introduce everyone else. Okay. Alex can help too if you'd like to. <laughs> you want me to be the talker person? You just go ahead and introduce everyone. Why don't you go ahead? All right. <laughs> oh, but I'm really bad. With Thanks. <laughs> Hi. Um, I'm okay. Uh, we're the Scholastic Bull team. If you haven't guessed, uh, do y'all? You have? Can you introduce yourselves? No. Okay. All right. I will introduce all of you if well, you'd like me to. Uh, all right. Would you like me to do that? Yeah, so we, have... we didn't practice beforehand. <laughs> <laughs> we practiced Scholastic Bowl yesterday. We didn't practice introducing ourselves. Can, so we have, I... um, we have Alex Steinbach, Hi. who is a senior, but new to Meridian this year, um, and a great addition. And we have Xander Werner, and Eileen Neal, and Riley Tirico, and Daniel Freed, and um, I'm going to miss everybody, Rory Jackson. And Avery Pike came back to us in uh, March. Avery had left. He was on the team last year, so he had left to go to school internationally and came back to Meridian. So we were so happy to see her right before our, our regional tournament. And then we have Ella Huang and Anna Goldenberg and then Sam Freed also in the back. So that's everybody on the Scholastic Bowl team. And we had a really, really – who did I miss? Tara. Tara. Oh, I missed – where's Tara She's here? Not, Tara's, Tara's not here. here. Betty's not here. Okay. So we have a few people that, are, that couldn't make it tonight. But we had a really, really successful season. Um, we beat every single team that we played um, with the exception of Maggie Walker. Um, and by victory, I, the word we used yesterday was well, trouncing. The word was the, trounce. We trounced every team um, that we played this season. Usually our wins were somewhere in the range of 180 to 200 points, which is a lot considering you can score a maximum of 500 in a Scholastic Bowl match. Um, the one team, unfortunately, that trounced us uh, was Maggie Walker, who ended up winning the state championship. Um, there are only four teams that make the state tournament, one from each region in Virginia. 
We unfortunately happen to be in the same region as Maggie Walker. Um, <laughs> the good news is when Maggie Walker went to states, they beat all the other teams at states far worse than they beat us. So we feel pretty good about it. And had we been, had we, um, been in a different region, probably would have been the state runner up. They are uh, very, very good. Um, and we did actually earn a bid to the national tournament. We aren't able to go um, for a lot of reasons, um, but it was, a, um, it was a truly outstanding season. And the one thing that I'm worried about is we're losing our seniors. Um, yeah, our best players. <laughs> so um, I, I can't say, I've been coaching the last two years of Scholastic Bowl, and I can't say how much our seniors have meant to us. Um, they're just some of the best Scholastic Bowl players I've ever seen in my life. Um, they know, Xander knows so much about science and history, and Eileen knows everything there is to know about literature. Um, just the most obscure book question you can ask Eileen, and, and she'll get it right. And, and Alex knows everything. And Alex just knows everything about politics and government, and he learned math and German, so you never My know nickname. you never know what's going to happen. He, yeah, his nickname is Silly Putty, so because he kind of ties it all together. So with all of that, um, we just want to thank you all for your support for helping us, you know, go to, to our regional. Oh. And Daniel was the only one. Oh, and Daniel's the senior who, I forgot Daniel. Uh, <laughs> Daniel, it came on because I said, you know, the one thing we don't have is someone who knows geography. And Daniel's like, I know geography, and my little brother knows geography too, and I'm going to drag him by the ear to come to practice. <laughs> um, <laughs> so um, we had a really fantastic season, and, and once again, we thank you all for your support. Um, and looking forward to next year where a lot more practice is going to have to happen. <laughs> That's great. Will you come up and join us for a picture? Thank you all so much. You make us very proud. Keep up the good work, and uh, we'll get Maggie Walker one of these days, right? But I, I like, I like that spin. I liked how you. I think that's very true that they didn't trounce. They trounced the other ones much worse. I think that's a good good way to look at it. So, thank you, Mr. Pepper, for all of your leadership and work with this talented group of students. Okay, we're at three point. Zero 03 now, robotics team, and Dr. Nuno, would you like to introduce this one? I would. Um, I'm, I'm very pleased this evening and excited to uh, welcome our robotics team, 1418, under the um, incredible uh, leadership of their coach, uh, Steve Knight, who will say that he doesn't do anything um, to lead them, but he gets them from place to place. So I'll invite uh, Steve Knight up to uh, introduce the team and assistant coach and um, talk a little bit about their season. Um, but also with them, they have Fred. So if you haven't met Fred, um, Fred is the uh, robot, and uh, perhaps we'll hear a little bit about him too. Good evening. Uh, thank you for having us. Um, I want to uh, thank you for having us. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for having us. Uh, the team is going to come up, and I, they have a very short presentation they'd like to share with you about our season, uh, the build season, the competition season, and all that. Come on up, Brandon. Um, but down arrow, okay? Down arrow? Yep. So weird. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Hi. Uh, my name is Brandon Werbel. I'm the team captain this year. I'm a senior. Uh, so we'll be talking to you guys a bit about the design process and what it really means to be uh, robotics at Meridian. Um, so first, well, what is first? So uh, first is the, we're part of the first robotics competition, uh, which is an international organization with teams uh, just like us around the world. Uh, every year in January, we get a new, uh, a new challenge that we have eight weeks to build a robot for. So it's, um, it's always uh, uh, really challenging. We, again, it's a very short amount of time to build that. Um, but it's, it's a really fun time and um, 
we're we're all better for it. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, oh, here we go. So uh, first of all, I just like to thank all of you guys for um, the financial commitment that. Uh, and support that you've been giving us throughout these years. We, unfortunately, FIRST and robotics just in general is a pretty uh, expensive sport to be in, and we really would not be able to be where we are today without all of you. So thank you very much. Which one is it? Down. 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 Okay. Cool. Yeah. All right. Hello. Uh, my name is Nina Miller. I'm a sophomore in the mechanics and electrical sub teams. Um, so Team 1418 was actually recently featured in an article by the Connection Press, and as Brandon said, we are a member of the FIRST Robotics Competition, which is an international organization for high school robotics. Um, if you're interested in learning more about FIRST, there is a recent documentary at, um, on Disney Plus about it called More Than Robots. Oops. Right? Yeah, okay. Um, and the theme for this year was Charged Up, and uh, where randomized teams of robots face off to earn as many points as they can by placing cones and cubes on shelves and pegs, and by balancing on a seesaw-like charging station. Down arrow, down arrow, okay. Um, hi, uh, I'm Maya Tahiri, I'm a sophomore, and I'm a programmer and media coordinator on 1418. So. 1418 has been involved in multiple outreach opportunities. For one, they host, uh, we hosted the Brownie Troops and we showed them what 1418 and FIRST is about. Um, we've also participated in STEM nights at Oak Street and showcased our robot there. And we've worked with neighboring high schools such as Yorktown and Marshall. And throughout the season, we've also worked on fundraising. Um, we have some sponsors, which you can see on the slideshow. We also have a pumpkin patch where we work as a team together and we help set up the tent and unload all these pumpkins. And with pu sponsors and the pumpkin patch, we've raised about $14,000 this year. And like Brandon mentioned before, first and robotics in general can be kind of expensive. So a lot of things have to go to you guys for being able to compete with that. Hello, my name is William Krovath, and I am a junior, third year mechanic on the team. The core idea of FIRST Robotics is the design cycle, which many students are familiar with as they also follow this process in IB design and IB computer science classes. We start, once we learn about the competition with our planning, we figure out what we want our robot to do and what mechanisms and code we need to make that happen. We move on to prototyping, making quick models of our ideas to see what works and what doesn't. Once we have a solid understanding of what we want to build, we actually build it, make it robust so it doesn't fail during the competition. Then we move on to testing it, we have to make sure it actually does what we want it to. And when we find problems, we have to iterate on that. We, have to, we may have to go back to planning to solve new problems, and we might have to build new solutions or uh, create new code. We keep good doing that until we end up with a robot that we're uh, happy with, or just until we run out of time. The build season is only two months, so we have to stay really focused on the process to get that done in time. Hi, I'm Thomas. Um, I'm the mechanics captain, and I am a senior this year. So. In the build season, we really use our skills that we honed over uh, the preseason and also the skills that new members have learned uh, from us during the preseason to actually build our robot. Um, and this year, we thought it was very important to include everyone in the decision making process of an actually like creating and prototyping at the very beginning. And many parts of the robot you see here are created by uh, newer members. Um, and so during the build season, we have two main groups we have our programmers and our mechanics. And within uh, the mechanics, we have two subdivisions of uh, there's electronics, there's also pneumatics. All right. Uh, hi, I'm Argyle. I'm a, a senior. This is my fourth year in the robotics program. Uh, so each season, we have we go to two district competitions. This year, we were lucky enough to make playoffs in both and qualify for our district championship, in which we also made it to playoffs. Uh, 
our two district competitions each have about like 40 teams at them in district championships is about 60 of those those top teams and then about 20 top 20 teams make it to worlds after that um, at the three competitions that we were able to compete at we were fortunate enough to win the gracious professionalism award which is one of the most prestigious awards that is offered that encapsulates first core values of humility positivity, respect, and fairness, and cooperation on and off the field of play. So the, our uh, build season just ended about a month ago, but uh, robotics never ends. Uh, so there are our next steps coming up um, are we're uh, going to be uh, visiting uh, every single eighth grade science classroom at MEH, um, which has been uh, an annual tradition at this point. Um, and it's a, it's a really great experience to um, both recruit, to recruit ourselves to the incoming freshmen and to let them know that um, there, there's a place on robotics for everyone. You don't have to just be like STEM oriented. We, we, have, we have a place for everyone. And, and that's why we go to the science classrooms instead of one of the encores or something like that. Uh, we're also running an interest meeting later in the year for both the um, eighth graders and other um, high schoolers in which they'll actually be able to you know, drive the robot um, and learn more about our team in general. Um, and then um, we're planning, and then after all of that, we're planning for next year. So um, we're, all, unfortunately, a lot of us are seniors, uh, which means that we're moving away um, at the end of the year, although we will always be here in spirit. Um, and so, but but that means that we're we're going to be working really hard to pass on all of our knowledge to uh, the leaders um, next year. Um, so the I think um, robotics really is it's it's our varsity sport and it's a it's a year long sport. So uh, the the actual build season might be only two months, but we're meeting regularly every week um, outside of that, both before and after, um, because yeah, this is this is what we do. So. Um, so if you guys, oh, this is tall. Okay. <laughs> I'm not, okay. Uh, if you guys are interested in, um, seeing what we do during build season, we also, um, we post a bunch of stuff on our Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook. Um, we also post stuff that we do post and preseason. So if you ever want to check anything out there, that'd be awesome. And then, yeah. Uh, thank you guys so much. Again, we really couldn't compete without your support. Um, so I'd, I'd really just like to thank all of you for, for listening to us and helping us. So thank you. No, th th really the thanks goes to you all. You're fantastic ambassadors for, uh, for Falls Church City Public Schools. Thank you. Uh, to Mr. Knight and the rest of the staff who, who guides you. And I, I have to say, I take personal pride in the Gracious Professionalism uh, Award. I think uh, you all could teach some adults uh, in this country what that means, Gracious Professionalism. And I think that's a terrific term. And so you, again, you've just made us really proud. You always make us proud. But um, you know, we hope that the group continues to grow and thrive. We'll miss our seniors. And, uh, and our hope is that we'll continue to groom future leadership to take, take your place. It will be hard to take your places but um, you guys have done a great job leading by example. And so again, thank you for being terrific ambassadors and uh, just keep us updated and we're, you always have our support for sure. Thank you so much. So, yes. Uh, Mr. Knight, can we uh, first invite you up to introduce your assistant coach and then um, could we get a picture with uh, the team as well? Absolutely. Awesome. Yes, and uh, Mr. Don Brooks is, uh, he was running security there and taking pictures for us. Um, he uh, has been donating his time, donating his knowledge uh, for those 300 plus hours. I couldn't do it without him, so thank you so much. But yeah, we would love to come up for a picture. No.
Okay, we're now moving on to 3.04 Asian American Pacific Islander Month Resolution. And I'm going to read that into the record. Falls Church City Public School Board Resolution 10-23 Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month. Whereas the month of May is recognized as Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month, and whereas Falls Church City Public Schools are committed to recognizing and celebrating the diverse cultures represented in our community, staff, and students, and whereas in 1992, President George H.W. Bush designated May as Asian American Pacific Islander Month, and whereas as of 2022, 20.6 million Americans identify as Asian, Native Hawaiian, or other Pacific Islander, and whereas 7% of the United States population is Asian American Pacific Islander, and whereas there is great diversity among the population of Asian American Pacific Islanders originating from 24 plus countries, and whereas celebrating Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month is one way that we can honor the many contributions of Asian American Pacific Islanders to our schools, our community, and our nation. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Falls Church City School Board does hereby proclaim May 2023 as Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month in Falls Church City Public Schools and urges all to respect and honor our diverse community and celebrate and build a culture of inclusivity and equity. Okay, if we could have a motion to approve this resolution. Yes, uh, Dr. Anderson. I move that the school board approve resolu resolution 10-23 Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month as presented. Thank you. May I have a second? Second. Thank you, Dr. Dimmick. All those in favor say yes. 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 All those opposed say no. Thank you. Motion carries. And we're now at 3.05 Jewish American Heritage Month resolution. Um, Ms. Silverman, could you read this into the record? Whereas the month of May is recognized as Jewish American Heritage Month, and whereas Falls Church City Public Schools are committed to recognizing and celebrating the diverse cultures represented in our community, staff, and students, and whereas Congress designated Jewish Heritage Month to celebrate the talent and contributions of the American Jewish community to American society in 2006, and whereas as of 2021, 5.8 million Americans identify as Jewish, and whereas the oldest congregation is New York Sephardi Shirith Israel Community, established in 1654, and whereas Jewish people have been hugely impactful in the development of the United States from Yosef Halevi, who acted as interpreter for Christopher Columbus on his voyage to the New World, and Emma Lazarus writing the words, Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses, which is inscribed on the Statue of Liberty. And whereas celebrating Jewish American Heritage Month is one way that we can honor the many contributions of Jewish Americans to our schools, our community, and our nation. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Falls Church City School Board does hereby proclaim May 2023 as Jewish American Heritage Month in Falls Church City Public Schools and urges all to respect and honor our diverse community and celebrate and build a culture of inclusivity and equity. Thank you, Ms. Silverman. Could I have a motion to approve this resolution? Yes, Vice Chair Gould. <laughs> Three point zero five. I move that the school board approve resolution eleven dash two three Jewish American Heritage Month as presented. Thank you, Vice Chair Gould. May I have a second? Second. Thank you, Dr. Ortiz. All those in favor say yes. 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 All those opposed say no. Thank you. Motion carries. We're at four point zero one. In accordance with school board policy BDDH slash KD, the time for each speaker is limited to three minutes. Additional written statements may be submitted to the clerk for dissemination to board members and for the record. Ms. Goodell, do we have any speakers this evening? We do not. Okay, and any written public comments? No, I did not. Okay, thank you. Okay, we'll move on to 5.01. Again, in accordance with school board policy BDDH slash KD, the time for each speaker is limited to three minutes. Additional written statements may be submitted to the clerk for dissemination to the board members and for the record. Ms. Goodell, do we have any public comments? We do not. Related to the budget? Okay, thank you. Okay, we're now at 6.01, uh, closed meeting. If someone could read us into close, please. Um, yes, Dr. Dimmick. 
Uh, Chair, pursuant to the Virginia Freedom of Information Act, I move that the board convene a closed meeting for the following purpose to discuss or consider the identified subject matter personnel under section 2.2-3711A1. In particular, staff appointments, staff reassignments, staff resignations, staff retirement, staff performance, staff change in position, staff separation, dependent care leave, long-term medical leave, child care leave requests and leave of absence, and advisory committee appointments and reappointments, and student matters under section 2.2-3711A2, in particular non-resident tuition students, and legal matters under section 2.2-3711A2, in particular consultation with legal counsel employed or retained by the body by the public body regarding specific legal matters requiring the provision of legal advice by such counsel. Thank you, Dr. Dimick. May I have a second? Thank you, Ms. Silverman. All those in favor say yes. Yes. All those opposed say no. Okay, motion carries. Dr. Noonan, what do you what do you think? About 10, 15 minutes? F 15 minutes or so. Okay. We'll be back in about 15 minutes. Thank you.
This this spring he's really Okay, welcome back. We're at 6.03. If someone could uh, make the motion to reconvene to open meeting, we're at 6.03. Chair, I move that the board reconvene to open meeting. Thank you, Dr. Dimmick. Could I have a second? Second. Thank you, Dr. Anderson. All those in favor say yes. Yes. All those opposed say no. Thank you. Motion carries. We're now at 7.01. If someone could please make the motion to certify the closed meeting. Uh, whoa, lots of, wow, I've never seen so many engaged <laughs> board members. All right. Yes, Dr. Um, Ortiz, please. Whereas the Falls Church Day School Board has convened a closed meeting on this day pursuant to affirmative recorded vote in accordance with the provisions of the Virginia Freedom of Information Act, and whereas <laughs> Section 2.2-3711B of the Code of Virginia requires a certification by this school board that such closed meeting was conducted in conformity with the Virginia law. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Falls Church Day School Board hereby certifies that to the best of each member's knowledge, one, only public business matters lawfully exempted from open meeting requirements by Virginia law were discussed in the closed meeting to which this certification applies. And two, only such public business matters as were identified in the motion convened in the closed meeting were heard, discussed, or considered. Thank you. Uh, yes, uh, that was that was a lot. Uh, can, I have a, uh, can I have a second, please? Yes, thank you, Dr. Anderson. All the, oh, I'm sorry, Ms. Goodell, could you please call the roll? Yes. Dr. Anderson? Here. Dr. Dimmick? Yes. Ms. Downs? Yes. Dr. Gould? Here. Dr. Ortiz? Here. Ms. Silverman? Here. And Ms. Tice? Yes. Thank you. Okay, thank you. We are now at um, 8.04, our consent agenda. And you'll see the items in four of you, personnel items, uh, student matters, advisory committee appointments and reappointments. And I would like to ask for unanimous consent to approve the consent agenda. And seeing no objections, the consent agenda is approved. And I'd like, before we go on to uh, Section 9 business, I'd like to invite, um, we have some new associate principals in our midst. I'd like to um, invite Mr. Peter Lobb first to the podium to say a few words, and let's give him a round of applause. Thank you. Um, I will be brief. There's uh, good TV and good basketball games on tonight, so we'll get us home. Um, I first want to just say thank you to all of you um, serving on our school board here, to Dr. Noonan, 
to Valerie Hardy and to all those um, for this opportunity. I am humbled um, and honored to serve. Um, in my brief statement, I simply want to say this. Um, by definition, our jobs as educators are ones of public service. My father, who once actually served on this board here, who taught at Northern Virginia Community College, helped make sure that I saw myself this way <clears throat> um, throughout my life. And I see first and foremost that I am that, a servant to the public. So to be a servant to the public, I need to believe in the power of education for everyone, that to root yourself into the belief that every student can learn, that every student has the potential to excel, that every student can and will contribute to society in a meaningful way. This belief roots me in my foundation and what I do, and I look forward to taking that into my role as associate principal at Meridian High School. I'm excited and I am honored. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Lobb, and, and you do have a rich history in, in Falls Church City, so well, congratulations, and we, we, are, we know we're going to see great things from you, so thank you so much. And uh, Mr. Stephen Pickering, did you go by Steve or Stephen? Steve. Okay, Steve, please, Mr. Pickering, please come to the podium. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, round of applause. Is that, Mr. Pickering is our, our new associate principal at Mary Ellen Henderson Middle School, so please say a few words. Well, First of all, I want to say thank you. Uh, I'm going to be very quick because I am a Sixers fan, and they are playing, and I have to watch that. Uh, no, I want to say thank you so much for this opportunity. I was excited before tonight, uh, and then seeing everything that we've seen here tonight, I, I can't tell you how excited I am now. Uh, you know, I've always believed schools are about uh, building community, about cultivating curiosity, uh, and are about demonstrating care for everybody. And that's what tonight has been about. And it's what Falls Church is, is about. And, um, you know, Falls Church, is, Falls Church is the gem of Northern Virginia, of Virginia uh, as a whole. Uh, voted number one in the, in the state for five years in a row. Five years in a row. And uh, I cannot tell you how excited and truly humbled I am to be here um, and to be working here, to work with the amazing staff, the incredible students, and the excited parents uh, of this community. So I'm so excited to be here, and thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you so much, Mr. Pickering. Welcome. We're, we're thrilled to have you. And I know under the leadership of our Haas, our head of secondary schools, Ms. Valerie Hardy, I know that you two are just going to soar to great heights. So we can't wait to see you all in action. And I will let you all go to watch your sports. You sure you don't want to stay for budget? We've got budget coming up. <laughs> just kidding. You can go ahead. Thank you. And uh, thank you so much for coming tonight. Congratulations to you both. OK, we're going to move on to 9.01 now, adoption of the 2023-2024 school school operating budget. And we have a uh, motion in front of you at 9.01. Any, um, before we read this motion, any questions, comments? We've been at this for beginning since I think we began this process in December. Is that right, Ms. Michael? I think we started way back in December. So we've been through many budget discussions. OK, if someone could please uh, make the motion. We're at 9.01. Yes, Ms. Silverman. I move that the school board adopt the 2023-24 school operating fund budget in the recurring amount of $61,067,929, requiring a city funding of $49,101,420, as detailed in the school board's advertised budget with the following modifications. Redirect funding for COLA and STEP to fully implement the compensation study recommendations and decrease the cost of health insurance based on final rates from the state. In addition, the following one-time expenditures are approved to revise the FY 2024 original budget. Expenditures funded through excess revenue share from 2022 in the amount of $536,472, FCCPS pandemic funded amount of $50,000, and finally general government pandemic funded amount of $374,331. Thank you, Ms. Silverman. May I have a second? Second. Thank you, Dr. Dimmick. All those in favor say yes. Yes. All those opposed say no. Thank you. Motion carries. And we're now at 9.02, adoption of the 2023-2024 school fund service budget. If I could have a motion, please. Yes, Vice Chair Gould. 
I move that the school board adopt the 2023-2024 school food services budget with receipts and disbursements in the amount of $1,382,794 as detailed in the school budget school board's adv advertised budget. Thank you, Madam Second. Thank you, Dr. Ortiz. All those in favor say yes. Yes. All those opposed say no. Thank you. Motion carries. And we're now at 9.03, adoption of the 2023-2024 community services budget. Yes, uh, Dr. Anderson. I move that the school board adopt the 2023-2024 community services fund budget in the amount of $2,310,700, requiring a total city appropriation of $107,500 as detailed in the school board's advertised budget. Thank you, Dr. Anderson. May I have a second? second. Thank you, Vice Chair Gould. All those in favor say yes. Yes. All those opposed say no. Thank you. Motion carries. And I think before we go to policies, let's give ourselves a round of applause. Yes. Um, I just wanted to publicly also thank Kristen Michael and Michelle Kopic for the thousands of hours of work that go into the budget each and every year and actually like every month. So <laughs> thanks so much. Thank you. That That is, you stole my thunder a little bit, Dr. Ortiz, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> but, but no, Dr. Ortiz is exactly correct. Uh, we would not be here today if it wasn't for Dr. Noonan's leadership and Ms. Michael, uh, your knowledge and your leadership and Ms. Ms. Kopik's uh, just countless hours on this budget. We could not have made it to this point without you, and that's for sure. And I also just wanted to thank um, our colleagues on city council and uh, the staff in the general government, and especially our city manager, Wyatt Shields. They uh, really uh, stuck by our revenue sharing agreement, and, it really, and it's really helping us in terms of making sure that we had the resources to, uh, in terms of the new uh, salary skills that resulted as a result of the salary study and the EPEDs and all that. All that was possible because uh, our colleagues in general government and city council. Thank you. Um, if, if the board is willing, I would like to uh, add one sentence. Um, it's right before Roman numeral three, and it would state, in the event that, in the event the Obergfell v. Hodges case, which guarantees the fundamental right to marry for same-sex couples, is overturned by case law or federal or state statute, the school board must take reasonable efforts to review this policy within one month of such a change in law. And. The reason I, I brought this up was just in case we need to, which I brought up at the last meeting, in case we need to address um, the word spouse and some of the points here um, that might be needed. Ms. Minson, did you have any comments on that? Or? The only other thing I would add, if the board does want to add that at um, the before section three of the policy, is perhaps adding a legal reference to that case then before the cross references at the bottom of the policy, which is easy to do, which is what we typically do when we refer to case law. Okay. How, how, is the rest of the board okay with Ms. Silverman's proposal? Yes, Ms. Ms. Tice. Uh, I'm, fully, I'm fully okay with the intention behind it. I just had a question on, on, on sort of the wording. Is there a, a legal definition in Virginia for um, like a, the domestic partnership versus spouse in terms of, is that, is that a cleaner way to go or is that getting even muddier? I think that would muddy it up a little bit. We had a lot of back and forth trying to figure out, do we want to use a, a defined term? Do we want to define the term ourselves? Um, so we thought that this would be the cleanest way since um, the United States Supreme Court did guarantee the right to marry. Um, that would be what needs to be overturned by state statute, federal statute, or by case law. Um, but we did spend some time thinking about, is there another way that we could define the terms or, or change this so that the board wouldn't need to go back and amend? And I, I don't, we couldn't figure out how to do it. So this was our best option. Uh, great. I mean, I trust your expertise and you've put way more thought into this. Um, I'm just curious also, not just from a change in law, but um, if we had a domestic partner like if people had been living together for however long and they're having a child together, like wh where is the line between when we would honor them as a co-parent? So our hope is that using the language that shows up in lines 28, 29, 30, and 31 in that section, right, um, if you're the biological parent um, or if you're an adoptive parent, you don't necessarily have to be married to access this leave. Okay. All right. I guess that makes sense. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Dimmick? 
May I just ask a timing question? It's 30 days. Well, I, so my thought, and, and I spoke with Ms. Minson about this, was first of all, we'll probably have plenty of um, anticipation time to realize that this is coming up. Um, so that's one thing. Two is we use best efforts to review this okay. within 30 days. Um, and three, it is a review in 30 days. It's not necessarily a change in policy in 30 days. Um, that's how I felt about it. If, I don't know if you had anything more. I, I think that's right, yes. I guess I was just thinking that occasionally we don't meet for a month in summer, and I didn't want us to be caught in that month. I think that's a good point. Uh, the The purpose of this ad added language is to future proof if an issue did come up so the board could bring it back. Um, so if um, there were a change in law that happened over the summer when the board isn't meeting, there can always be a special meeting. Also matters can be brought, um, work sessions can be turned into board meetings if we needed to. Um, and I do think that by having the language saying would make reasonable efforts to meet, if, if the board isn't able to right away, it would still be something that would be coming forth relatively soon after a change in the law. Okay. Okay. Um, I think. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, Dr. Nguyen. Just a. Um, this is maybe more of a question to Ms. Sil Ms. Silverman. Um, would as soon as practicable be okay, or do you want to stick to the 30 days? I like as soon as practicable. If the board is, if the rest of the board is also on board, a lot of boards sure. there. That sounds good. Okay. Thanks. So if it's all right, I'll just read one more time. It'll be added after um, line 37 in the event the Oberfell versus Hodges case, which guarantees the fundamental right to marry for same-sex couples, is overturned by case law or federal or state statute. The school board must make reasonable efforts to review this policy as soon as practicable. And I'm seeing head nods, so I think uh, when we, um, when the board does uh, make a motion on this policy, I would suggest um, adopt the policy as amended, and we can reflect that, and I can make those changes. Um, and then the last policy for this evening is policy GCBB, supplementary pay. This would replace our current policy um, 8.56, the EPED duty contracts policy. There were no changes from first reading to this policy. Any questions about policy GCBB? Hearing none, the final action for the board this evening would be to remove policy 8.55. And that's um, included in the motion. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Minson. Uh, Ms. Silverman, would you like to make the motion and note the one that's amended? Or I can, or we, we can have someone else if you're. I sorry, I just had to scroll up. Okay. Um, I move that the school board approve second reading and adoption of policies GCBCA, transferring sick leave and pay for unused sick leave. GCBEAA parental leave as mod as amended, and GCBB supplementary pay as presented, and removal of policy 8.55 sponsorship of student activities. Thank you, Ms. Silverman. May I have a second? Second. Thank you, Dr. Anderson. All those in favor say yes. Yes. All those opposed say no. Thank you. Motion carries. And we're now at 10.01 future agenda items. Does anyone have any future agenda items? Okay, we will move on to 11.01 superintendent's report. Great, thank you so much. Um, my uh, report, as, as always, is sort of organized by theme uh, associated with the strategic plan, and the first is resource management and continuous improvement. The first thing I wanted to uh, let the board and the community know is that last month I did share that we had open registration um, uh, for returning students for 23-24 uh, school year. Um, and we started early for the first time, and a month into the process, we're at about 30% completion, which is really impressive. So I join in our with our data team uh, in hoping that that momentum continues, uh, and we meet the division's goal of 90% parents um, to register by June 30th. So if you haven't registered, please register. Um, and that's really, uh, really important to us. Um, feedback has been really positive so far. 
Uh, but there have been occasional technological glitches, but if you need some help, um, you can certainly reach out to the FCCPS registrar, uh, and that is uh, really easy to do. You can just go to the website, click the link, and uh, give us your feedback. Um, next is under wellness, equity, and belonging tonight. Thank you so much for adopting the two uh, resolutions regarding Asian Pacific, uh, Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month and Jewish American Heritage Month. Um, we will continue with our social media presence uh, for both, um, both months as well as the school board recognitions that you did. Um, Friday, we are really excited because it marks the return of our Special Olympics Little Feet Meet. Um, and I hope all of you can come. Um, it's a really joyous opportunity for our preschool kids and elementary kids to enjoy a track meet at the Meridian Field. Um, we're expecting about 500 athletes uh, from FCCPS, Arlington, and Fairfax. And we're also expecting many students and staff to be there helping out throughout the day. To me, it's one of the highlights of the spring. Um, and it's one of the most fun days. And I hope that the weather holds for us. Um, and if it rains, you know, we might just get wet. And it'll be all right. Um, next is IB Infused Teaching and Learning. Um, an IB for All Day of Celebration is happening uh, during the month of May. Um, where we're focused on our IB exams. Everybody's taking them. So it's like IB for everybody, it seems like. Um, but it, it is a huge undertaking uh, for our staff, our students, and our volunteers in the midst of the stressful time. And I want to celebrate that on May 3rd and 4th, 173 members of the senior class um, sat for their IB English exam. Um, this is something really for us to celebrate because it marks the largest number of students that have ever taken an IB exam in the history of George Mason and Meridian uh, in a given year. Um, and it is truly because I think we're, you know, we're, we're really focused in on that continuum effort and uh, applaud our students and our teachers that have really made, made that happen. Uh, pallets and planters. If you haven't been in the high school lately and haven't seen the new planters that are around the building, um, just want to give a shout out to Ray Ruor and Kenny George and Jason Perkins and Carrie Pollock uh, for their um, work around pallets and planters. Students have repurposed old pallets uh, into planters and they grow plants to fill them for the vivarium. And many of our students have been tasked with watering and the maintenance of the pl plants. And a series of articles about this work has actually been accepted to Technology and Engineering Teacher Journal. Um, that was also a focus of the 20, and it was also the focus of the 2023 International Technology and Engineering Educators Association Conference. Um, and I, I just, again, can't give enough credit to that team. Um, they really put themselves out there. And uh, if you don't know Dr. Ruwar, he is a uh, prolific writer and, and really likes to get the word out. Um, we had a number of students, um, 67 to be exact, in the 9th through 12th grade that were recognized by, by the United Nations Association of the United States and interview in their sixth annual Community Service Awards. This program was open to all U.S. students and uh, has been designated to connect students, community service activities, skill development, development and commitment to the sustainable development goals to transform our world. Uh, with a collective of 4,670 community service hours this school year, Meridian High School earned the Sapphire Award. Uh, 25 students earned a merit award for 20 hours of, of service, 29 earned the Honor Award for 40 hours of service, and 13 earned the Ambassador Award with over 100 hours of service, um, which led to um, really nice recognition by the UN Association uh, of America. Um, I think everybody here has gotten the message, but if not, um, we would love to have everyone join us uh, in the community even, if you'd like, to our celebration of excellence. This is a community event to uh, celebrate our employees at our annual uh, event where uh, we meet on the learning stairs May 15th at 415 at Meridian High School, and it's an annual event that recognizes all of our employees that were nominated for recognition. Um, and they are both local recognitions, national recognitions, and regional recognitions. Um, and it's a long list of more than 35 people and quite impressive. And it's also online if anybody wants to go online and look at the names. Um, it's really, really great to see who all is there. And I won't read them tonight. Um, but that is uh, my report for this evening. And uh, really excited for the upcoming next few weeks. So, uh, you know, now the budget is done um, and IV testing is going on and SOL testing is going on. Um, the, the end will be here before we know it. And uh, it will be sad to say goodbye to everybody for the summer. We'll miss them, but we'll be working hard to welcome them back next year. So, thank you. 
Thank you. I always feel like this time of year you can just feel the pace picking up and things are getting crazier and crazier. <laughs> yes, uh, Dr. Dimmick. Dr. Noonan, can you remind me um, of when our staff had their election for a collective bargaining representative? Yes. Um, we are moving forward with the election for a certified and non-certified staff. And we published notices yesterday. And an election will be held electronically May 22nd and May 23rd. Excellent. I would like to take this opportunity to encourage all of our staff to let their voices be heard and vote in the upcoming election. Thank you, Dr. Dimmick. OK. Any other questions or comments? Great. OK. And we'll go ahead with, uh, oops, hold on. Let me look at the agenda. OK. Yes, we're in late, so we're at 12 points are one. Thank you, Dr. Newman, for that update. Um, I'll start with uh, Ms. Silverman for uh, board and student lead. Well, obviously, uh, Mr. Castro's not here, so just board comments and updates. I have nothing to report tonight. Okay, thank you. Dr. Dimmick. Um, I attended the library board meeting. They're working on their budget as we're working on our budget. Um, and I not being as diligent at following our library, I learned that the Library Foundation has a newsletter that they would all like us to uh, to subscribe to. I also attended the Coral Boosters meeting um, on May 3rd. Oak Street had their spring concert on the May 24th and 25th. Meridian and Henderson will have their spring concerts. So if you want to hear some lovely singing, please come out. Thank you. Dr. Ortiz. Uh, no liaison comments, however, I do want to note that this is also that May is a mental health awareness month. So um, you know, I think I believe that there's some stuff going on in the schools. So um, you know that just feeds right into the uh, presentation that we received right at the beginning of the of the program. Great point. Thank you. Vice Chair Gould. Yes, uh, we had office hours. Uh, Chair Downs and I attended. We had um, someone come by to talk about the, the, the language wheel and how that works in seventh uh, seventh grade and Mr. Bates or soon to be Dr. Bates is helping us out with that. Um, we also, I attended the chamber meeting uh, led uh, with Regan Davis and I, um, which was uh, led by the great Emily Jenkins. And it's a great uh, reminder of the partnership that we had, that we have with our businesses and our community as evidenced by the, uh, the number of businesses that were here that were honored in the beginning of our uh, meeting and how important they are to us. And I also attended the VSBA regional meeting with all of our regional partners in the uh, last night, and the theme was uh, teacher retention, um, which uh, and teacher recruitment, and uh, the number of teachers, uh, the slots that are not filled. And so, uh, I did not raise my hand and say we don't have as the issues that all the other districts have. And it was uh, implied at one point that we are um, could be part of the problem with the fact that we've got a great benefits and a great uh, recruitment of our of our staff. So it was great. It was good to be with our colleagues and um, look forward to other regional meetings. Thank you, Vice Chair Gould, for attending that meeting and representing us. Uh, I I have a quick update. Uh, Meridian PTSA uh, had their all night uh, grad fundraiser at Clarendon's Don's on Sunday. It was a lot of fun. Some great uh, prizes. I will say that. Uh, our 11-year-old decided to buy outright the Girl Scout cookie basket. So I now have $100 worth of Girl Scout cookies at my house that no one in my house needs cookies. So anyway, but they did raise a good, good amount of money. Uh, the um, Falls Church Education Foundation, their gala is next Friday, May 19th. And so I, I know I think um, most of my colleagues will be there and uh, just, you know, encouraging everyone to attend if they can. I know the Education Foundation has some extra tickets for teachers and staff who um, might not be able to um, put, you know, the tickets are not cheap. So, you know, for, for teachers and staff, there are some, some tickets uh, for them. And uh, just, you know, again, Falls Church Education Foundation really works to support our teachers with teacher training and grants and professional development and also our ESOL community. And uh, so we just, you know, this is their biggest fundraiser of the year by far. So if we can just have as many people join, join the evening, it's always a lot of fun and a great way to raise money for our schools. And um, I attended, uh, Dr. Noon and I both attended PEAK a few weeks ago. A couple of the things we talked about, retirement benefits, um, sort of the pre-service week when, when the teachers come back in, in August, uh, the salary study, and also the new format of the report cards. And that's it for me. Dr. Anderson. I have no liaison comments. Thank you. Ms. Tice. 
<laughs> well, I have enough for all of us. Um, the Health and Wellness Advisory Committee has not met since our um, last update, but I did want to mention that they have created a working group um, on teen wellness that came out of as a follow up to the Derek Thompson presentation um, on the effects of digital media. So they're getting together a group of parents who are interested in engaging more in the topic. Um, and their first meeting will be Monday, June 5th at 7 p.m. at Meridian. Um, I'm sure you can uh, reach out to our chair via the website um, if you have other questions or me. Um, our Special Education Advisory Committee met uh, just last week at JTP, which was really fun to be um, at, at, uh, in that school. And we have two great new members. We had a really robust conversation of the services um, focused on the services for our youngest learners and all of the awesome things that go on at JTP. The, a lot of good questions and conversation about the population and the enrollment and classes. Um, and uh, yes, we are also very excited about the Little Feet Meet. I will be there. Um, there's a lot of energy and excitement about bringing that. I echo all of the sentiments about it being such a special event. Uh, all right, and the Advisory Board for Recreation and Parks um, met as well. They have a record number of soccer players, more than ever, um, more than basketball, I think, for the first time. Camp enrollment is high, even though um, due to the scheduling for this summer, um, they have one fewer week of camps but the camp enrollment is high, so that helps um, counteract that a little bit. The art walk plaques are up, so if you haven't noticed those around town, they're really a wonderful way to learn more about the art around our community. There's QR codes that can you can go to the website and find a, a route to check out all the art. Um, fireworks are back on July 2nd at the high school, potentially the last year for them, um, depending on how the buildings and constructions and vendors all work out. Memorial Day Parade coming up, um, and the farmer's market has a new manager. So if you're at the farmer's market, introduce yourself and welcome her. Thank you, Ms. Tice. Okay, we're going to move on now to 13.01, approval of minutes of June 14th, 2022. And Ms. Goodell had sent those out to us. Any comments or questions? Okay, so I'd like to ask for unanimous consent to approve the minutes of June 14th, 2022 as presented. And hearing no objections, those minutes are approved. Okay, and we're at section 14.01, FCC PS enrollment. That's for your review as well as the monthly budget monitoring report. Okay, and uh, we are going to, this is a little bit different than usual. We're going to be closing out our meeting with an executive closed meeting. We're at 15.01, if someone could read us in, into closed. Yes, Ms. Silverman. Pursuant to Virginia Freedom of Information Act, I move that the board convene a closed meeting for the following purpose to discuss or consider the identified subject matter. Personnel under section 2.2-3711A1, in particular, superintendent's contract. Thank you, Ms. Silverman. May I have a second? Thank you, Vice Chair Gould. All those in favor say yes. 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 All those opposed say no. Thank you. Motion carries. And I guess, Ms. Vincent, we're going to go into where we were before. Okay, and then I guess we say goodnight to everyone else. Good night, okay. <laughs> Enjoy. Go watch basketball. <laughs>